Hello, welcome back. So we are now going to talk about how to make needle woven picots. So that's what these guys are up here. They're kind of a fun little um, thing that you can make in different in the different crinic threads. So this one's a really long thin one. This one's kind of a, a short fat one. And this one I did with two separate colored threads, which is kind of exciting. And then we're going to talk just a little bit about weaving in general. So first I'm going to show you how to make a detached needle woven pico. So for this you need a pin and what I'm going to do is just place my pin in the fabric like that and wherever um, you bring the pin up here that's going to kind of determine the length of your pico which you'll see in just a moment. I'll go over threading the needle again. So what I explained in a previous video is that I like to take the thread, bring it down between my fingers, nice and tight, so I can barely see the thread right there. And then as I slowly open my fingers, that's just gonna pop right through the needle like that, kind of like magic, once you get used to it anyways. Um, and also to talk about the needle that I'm using, so this is a tapestry needle, which I uh, referenced in a previous video, and it's got this nice large eye, so it's easy to thread. And you'll see why in a moment why we're using the tapestry needle which has a dull point as opposed to an embroidery or chenille needle which has a sharp point. So for ease I'm just going to put a knot at the end of my thread right here and start with that on the back side although I advocate for not using too many knots on the back of your piece because sometimes as you're stitching uh, you'll accidentally stitch through the knots and it's quite annoying. But for ease for this video, I'm just going to start here and I've got my knot on the back there. So I'm going to come up just to the left of where my needle is coming out and then I'm going to sweep underneath the top of the pin. So you can see what I was saying about how this determines how long my pico is. And then I'm going to go down on this side here. So I'm making kind of a little bit of a, a triangle here. Next, I'm going to come up right in the center, which is why my pin, as you can see, is off a little bit off to the side. So when I bring my needle up in the center, the pin's not in the way. Then I'm gonna bring this around the top of the pin again. And next, I'm gonna start my weaving. So this is why we have this tapestry needle, because we're going to take the needle up and down over the various threads here. So under, over, under. And by using the point of the needle, which is dull, we're not gonna accidentally catch the fabric or catch any of these threads. It's just gonna slide through nice and easy. So under, over, under. And then I'm gonna use my needle here. It's just a little bit of a tool to keep this nice and neat. And then I'm gonna pull that down nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm going to go over, under, over. Use my needle as a tool. Pull that down. Under, over, under. And it's up to you if you wanna worry about how flat these threads are. If you want, they can just twist and do whatever, or you can keep them nice and flat. I'm just kind of going with the flow and um, letting them twist on themselves. So then under, over, under, over. Under, over, under. And it depends also, if you wanna have a really tight one, you can push these down more, or you can leave them a little bit looser and not push them down as much. And you wanna kinda of try to fill in as much as you can because you don't wanna leave the little these little legs at the top bare. So just make sure that you get those guys covered. So maybe one more. I think that'll be a good amount for this one. If you need to do it in two moves, that's fine. So before I was kind of doing it all at once, but now that I'm at the end, it's easier to just go under here, and then over, and then under again. And once you get to the very end, all you're gonna do is take your needle down off to one side. So bring my needle down here. And then I'm just gonna pull the pin out, and here I've got my nice little woven pico. And you can adjust here 
and make this a little bit, change the shape however you want. And what else is fun about these is that you can actually stitch them in place if you like. So if you wanted to make this a little bit of a rounded something, you could then come up below and make a little stitch there and that will hold that in place. So it's up to you. You can leave them floppy like this or you can hold them down in place like that one. And then over here I have a little weaving sample and all I did for this was I made, it started out as a grid and then I kind of started to curve this off to the side just for something different. And I have two different examples of threads that have been woven through here. I have this one that's a little bit more of a rounded cord and I left that a little bit more open so you can see there's space in there. And then this one is a nice flat thread. And so I've woven that through here and it looks a little bit different depending on which thread you're using. And as I mentioned with this woven pico over here, you can be really careful with the flat thread and make sure that it's nice and flat. Or you over here, I had a few little twists and turns, but just because this is an example, I didn't worry about it too much. So it's up to you if you want to keep it nice and neat or if you want to let it twist and do whatever it wants to do. So again, threading my needle like this and then coming over here to this little weaving section I'm going to go under over under over under work my way through part of it and then keep on going so over under over. And you got to kind of move it around to whatever angle works for you And then at the end here, you have a couple options. You can either keep on weaving like this, or you can take it down. So over on this end, I, I left that kind of loose here. So you can, um, you know, you could stuff that, you could fill it with something else, or if you want it to be nice and flat, you can come down at the end of each of your rows. So those are a couple different uh, things you can do with the Krynic threads. And if you think of any stitches that you'd like me to demonstrate, just let us know and we can demonstrate those as well.